Hey everyone, as we are fast approaching the end of this year's tax year and company bonus season is shortly coming into play and with many of us debating whether to put this extra little money into our workplace pension and into our investment ISA, that's what you are thinking, right? You're not going to spend it, right? I thought it would be a great opportunity to discuss whether or not anytime we come into some little extra cash, whether we should be topping up our pension contributions or putting it into our investment ISA. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Now, before we go any further, I just want to clarify that I know there are other ways that you could spend this money. You could pay off extra debt, pay off an extra mortgage, or put it in towards a premium bond, for example. But that is a whole other topic. Pensions and investment ices are typically pipped against one another about which one is the best vehicle for our long-term growth. So that is what we're gonna be discussing in this video. Secondly, um, when I mention ices going forward, I am talking about stocks and shares ices. So let's have a quick recap on how a private pension and an investment ISA works. Again, I've done full videos on these, so if you want to check out those, I'll put the links to all of that in the description box down below. So your private pension is a pot of money that you will be saving for your later years. This pot of money is then invested in the market with the aim to hopefully have the value of this pot grow substantially before you hit retirement. And then when you do hit retirement, you can then use this pot to fund your lifestyle going forward. Now, every time that you contribute towards your pension, you are given a major Amazing tax breaks. It is a bit convoluted, but in a simplified sense, any money that you do contribute to your pot is free from income tax and national insurance tax. Currently, you can access this pot when you reach 55. This is changing to 57 in 2028. You can join your pension scheme through your workplace. When you do join your workplace, you will actually be automatically enrolled to the pension scheme. Or if you're self-employed or you indeed, in fact, want another pension pot, you can put it towards a self-invested personal pension or what is commonly known as a SIP. Moving on to ISAs, which stands for Individual Savings Account. It is an account offered by banks and other financial services and you're allowed to contribute up to £20,000 each tax year into one of these accounts. Now, the unique thing about putting your money towards an investment account is that any money that you make from this account is not subject to any tax whatsoever. To understand this better, let's go through the two most common tax allowances that each individual here in the UK has. Now, the first one being is the personal savings allowance, which protects you from any taxes on your interest gained up to £1,000 per tax year. That is if you are a basic income holder. If you are a higher rate income earner, you're allowed a £500 allowance per tax year. Now, this is only applicable if you hold cash within your ISA account, and that's pretty much why I'm not going to be talking much further about cash ISAs, because with ridiculously low interest rates and such high personal savings allowance, I mean, it's really unlikely that for the majority of us will ever be close to getting past that £1,000 or £500 mark. I mean, I'm lucky if I see £5 throughout the tax year, let alone um, £1,000. So you really need to have gajillions of pounds sitting within an account for you to be ever close to worrying about exceeding your personal savings allowance. The next allowance is something called a capital gains tax allowance, which protects you from being taxed on any capital gained on your investment products. And this is up to £12,300 per tax year. Capital gains could be things like earning a dividend income or earning a return on your investment. Again, this allowance is quite hard to achieve in the short term. However, if you are investing for the long run, which is what I encourage you guys and girls to do, then this is a great tax benefiting scheme because as your money grows, the more capital gains tax you may be subject to if you weren't holding those investments within an ISA wrapper. So this is only applicable to stocks and shares ISAs. I won't be talking about lifetime ISAs or innovative ISAs in this episode. Now let's compare whether we should be putting extra cash towards our private pension or our investment ISA. Now it's not going to be a very straightforward answer. It's going to be very much dependent on your personal situation. However, hopefully once we've done all these comparisons, you can make a good judgment call about which is the most appropriate option for you. Because let's be honest, the fact that you've actually decided that you're only going to be putting this money towards your pension or your ISA is actually a really good signal because you're not actually deciding to splurge it on some mad shopping spree, for example. So there is going to be no wrong answer, but I do believe depending on your situation, one answer could be more favorable than the other. 
So let's get into it. Cool, so we really need to understand the taxes um, when it comes to these two products. So let's start off with the pension. Now, as I mentioned before, any money that you contribute towards your private pension is not subject to any tax whatsoever. Um, again, that is a very simplified idea. Um, I'd go into it a bit more detail in my previous video, but, but essentially you don't pay tax on any money that you contribute towards your private pension, and this is through government refunds and top ups. And thus, because it's not tax, more money is going into your pension and through the magic of compound interest and all things being equal, pension pots are likely to compound a lot faster than your ISA counterpart. It's important to note that these tax benefits also have allowances. So you're only allowed to use this for 40,000 pounds per tax year or 1 million and 73,100 through your entire lifetime. So any contributions above these allowances towards your pensions will be taxed. So if you happen to be someone that is maxing out their pension allowance every year, then perhaps contributing more money to the pension pot doesn't really make much sense. And maybe the investment ISA option would be a better option. And that is because with a pension pot, yes, although it may be tax-free money that's going in, but once you do hit retirement age, a large proportion of that pot is then gonna be taxable. You can take 25% out of your pension pot tax-free in a lump sum, but the remaining 75% will be subject to tax. And the tax you'll be paying on it will be in line with whatever tax situation we find ourselves in the future. It won't be based on today's tax system. So again, we should account for a little bit of uncertainty because we don't really know what the tax system is gonna look like in the future. Now sticking to the same topic, but looking at ISAs now. So yeah, of course, any money that you put towards your ISA account would have already been subject to tax because you would have already paid income tax and national insurance tax on it already. However, once you've contributed to your ISA, and remember you can contribute up to 20,000 pounds per tax year, any profits or dividends earned from that ISA account is not subject to any tax whatsoever. And contrary to the pension situation, when we are paying tax for our investment ISA, when we do get it from our paycheck, for example, we already know what the tax system looks like today and we don't have to worry about what the tax system is going to look like in the future. So a little bit more certainty in terms of how much money we can actually earn in the long term because we don't have to worry about the tax system. Now the next factor is to consider your employer's contributions. So this is only going to be applicable for pensions that you get from your workplace. So any SIP accounts won't be applicable here. So with that being said, if you do have a pension with your workplace and it's on the defined contribution scheme, which is the most common pension scheme right now, the old way was something called the final salary or defined benefits, which is very, very rare. But with the defined contributions, your employer will also be contributing with you towards your pension pot as well. Now, this is essentially free money that you'll be getting from your employer that otherwise you will not be able to claim on. So I always suggest where you can, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, if you are in a workplace pension, make sure you are getting the most money that you can from your employer to contribute to your pension pot. Because again, I stress this a lot, it is free money that otherwise you will not be able to get access to. Ways that you can do this is that for most workplaces, it's quite common that they do some sort of matching scheme. So for example, they will match whatever contributions I put into the pot. So if I'm currently putting in 5% into my pension pot, my employer will also put 5%, but they are willing to match me up to 8% of my contributions. So in that case, I should be trying my best to ensure that I'm contributing at least 8% towards my pension pot, and that way I can get the employer to also contribute 8%. So this is a major, major benefit for those that are on the workplace pension scheme, because not only is the money that you're contributing tax-free and likely to grow much faster than the ISA counterpart, but your employer is also contributing towards your workplace pension, and thus it's going to grow a lot, lot faster than the ISA account. Now there is no situation similar onto the ISA account, so this is a pure advantage to those on the workplace pension. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please ensure to like, comment, and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. So moving on to the next factor, and this is how we access these accounts. So starting off with pensions, it's important to note that any money that you contribute towards your private pension is locked away, and you can only begin to access it once you hit 55, that's changing to 57 if you're retiring in 2028 or afterwards. Now there are some circumstances which will allow you to withdraw your money earlier than the 55 age or 57 age. Um, but one example of that is if you become ill of health, but it all depends on your private pension provider. So do check with them if you wanna find out more information about that. Otherwise, for most cases, our money will be locked away until we hit that retirement age. And once we do hit that age, again, we can only take out 25% of it as a tax-free 
lump sum. And then the remaining 75%, we have a few options available to us. You can take out 25% as a tax-free lump sum and keep the remaining money working in your pension pot invested in the market. And then when you do need the money again, you can take another little chunk from it as well. This is something commonly known as drawdowns. Or you can use your pot to buy something called an annuity. An annuity is basically an income guaranteed for life. So sticking to the same topic, but now looking at ISA accounts, although we should be investing in our ISA accounts for the long run, it's really good to know that if we do come into some major financial difficulty, it's good to know that any money that you've invested in a stocks and shares ISA, there is little to no boundaries if you want to take out your money earlier than you initially planned. Although when you do take out that money, it might not be at the optimal price. So do take that into account. Now the rules on this can be slightly different depending on who you invested with. So I would encourage you to check the terms and conditions with the broker that you have chosen to carry your investment product. But for the most part, you should usually be able to get access to your money within a few working days. And it does take a few working days because if you have invested in a product, the broker will need some time to sell that product off and then convert that into cash and then give that to you in your bank account. And that usually takes about, I think I did it in the past and it took about three to five working days. So it's not really, really long. But again, um, if you do need access to immediate cash, um, then it might still not work in your favor. But that is why we have emergency funds. But that is a whole other topic. Note that any money that you do withdraw from your ISA accounts does not mean you get a refund in your tax allowance for that year. So for example, say I contributed £20,000 towards my ISA account at the beginning of the tax year, which again, remember, is the total maximum allowance for each tax year. But then during the middle of the year, I decide to withdraw that money. That does not mean my allowance then becomes 20000 again. It still sticks at zero because I already used the allowance at the beginning of the year. So it's not refundable if you withdraw money from your ISA account. Inherit is another factor that is quite important to consider because it does come with a very hefty tax bill. So for those that don't know, inheritance tax is charged at 40% and this is charged on assets or estates that are worth over £325,000. That's what it is currently. This may change in the near future, so do keep up to date with the government website. So on pensions, if you are on a defined contribution scheme and you die before the age of 75, your pension pot is considered outside of your estate, so it's not subject to any inheritance tax whatsoever. If you pass away after the age of 75, the beneficiaries to your pension pot will be subject to a form of income tax, and this will be dependent on the size of the pot that you pass on. If you happen to have a defined benefits pension or a final salary pension, as what is commonly called, most schemes will pay out a lump sum to your beneficiaries, um, which I think works out to be two to four years of your final salary. If you pass away before the age of 75, your beneficiaries get this money tax free. If you do it after the age of 75, they will be subject to tax once the money has been passed on. Now, ISA accounts are a bit more complex because you do have the added complication if you have a spouse or a civil partner and they usually get some tax benefits from it. But for a simplified version, ISA accounts are considered as part of your estate and thus will be subject to inheritance tax. Another factor account is your likelihood of whether or not you are likely to stay in the UK in the near future. Now with pensions, you are able to transfer your pension pot from one UK provider to the country of your new residence. However, the process isn't very straightforward and is quite complex. And if not done correctly, you may be subject to paying some tax if you do the transfer. Now you do have the option to keep your pension pot here in the UK. However, it is very unlikely once you do hit retirement age and you want to start withdrawing money from it, it's very unlikely that your pension provider will pay into an overseas account. So you'll probably have to open up a UK account for the pension provider to pay into, and then you will use that UK account to pay into your overseas account. And if you do so, you're likely going to be running into charges every time you make a transfer. So ISA accounts are a bit more flexible in this sense. So if you are deciding to move country, you can simply take out the money from your stocks and shares ISA, convert it into cash, and then take it with you when you move abroad. You do have the option to keep the account open here in the UK once you do move abroad. However, you won't be able to contribute any additional money to that ISA account once it's been one tax year later from the date that you moved. Now onto the final point, and this is to do with government borrowing. Now, given that the UK economy is very developed, this is very unlikely to happen. However, it is worth considering how the government borrow most of its money. 
So I'm just gonna show you an extract from positivemoney.org because um, it explains it really, really well. Uh, and they say, rather than borrowing from banks, the government typically borrow from the market, primarily pension funds and insurance companies. These companies lend money to the government by buying the bonds that the government issues for this purpose. Many companies favor investing money in government bonds due to the lack of risk involved. The UK government has never defaulted on its debt obligations. This is why I think this is a very low risk situation, but a situation still worth considering. The UK government has never defaulted on its debt obligations and is unlikely to do in the future, primarily because it's able to collect money from the public via taxation. So although this is very low risk and that your pension pot is very unlikely to be impacted, it's still worth knowing that one of the main ways the government borrow money is through pension funds. Now the government do have other forms of borrowing however it's predominantly made from the market but specifically through pension providers and insurance companies. So that are all the points that I think are worth considering if you've come into some extra money and you're deciding whether or not to put it towards your pension pot or your investment ISA. Now as you can see there is no straightforward answer it's very much dependent on your situation but as a starting point to help you decide which option is likely going to be better for you, think about whether or not you are currently maxing out your employer's contribution to your private pension. Because amongst all the tax benefits that you get when you put your money towards a pension or an ISA account, this one benefit really gives the pension option the added edge over the ISA counterpart. So my suggestion would be to focus on that as a starting point. However, if you're like me and you've already maxed out your employer's contributions and you're already happy with the level of contributions you're making to your pension pot and your affair few years from ever getting to that retirement age I see the benefit of putting any extra money that I gain into my ISA account because I really want to reap the tax-free earnings once my ISA account slowly grows and becomes a significant amount. Cool so that's it for this week's episode let me know in the comment section down below whether you would contribute more to your ISA account or your pension and, and why that would be really interesting to hear and as always if you really like this video I would really appreciate if you gave this a massive thumbs up that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel and as always I release a video every single Monday so if you want to keep up to date with those hit the subscribe button as well see you later